All right, so I have a case for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm working clinically now. Uh, on top of moving medicine forward, I have my own panel of patients. I work at a major academic health system here in Rochester, New York, and I'm learning a ton. I really love it. There's some cases where, you know, it, it reminds me how important lifestyle medicine is. Here's one of them. Middle-aged man, he was on a health kick and he went keto. All right. So he's min minimal carbohydrate diet, extra animal protein, especially meat and eggs. He was eating some vegetables, but he was really trying to minimize carbohydrates. I think some days he was truly in ketosis, other days, maybe not quite. He was working out more and he felt good initially. He felt more energy, more clarity when he woke up in the morning, felt like he could focus. So he was kind of egged on by this process and he kept going. Unfortunately, it didn't end well. So he, he was at the pool, an indoor pool winter time, helping his kids getting in and out. And he had a pre-syncopal episode. So that means he almost fainted. It was like the, the, the shades went down and ev everything turned black. And he had some capacity to grab the lifeguard who called 911. He was whisked to the emergency room in, in an ambulance. And this is almost the saddest part because ultimately he was okay. Right? But the, the scary part is he felt like he was dying. Um, and he was thinking about how he'd never see his family again. It was horrifying to hear that as his PCP. So he got to the ER and they did the workup. His lab showed that he had elevated ketones in the blood. So his beta hydroxybutyrate was elevated. And consequently, he had a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So basically means that your blood becomes a little acidic because ketones are acidic. So he was in ketosis and it went too far. His blood, and they look at the pH, just like you're testing your pool. The blood was just a touch acidic. Now blood has to be very closely regulated for our listeners. It's gotta be within a tight range. His went just under the normal range. So the body was still compensating, but he was not in a good situation. If that went further, if he didn't get to rehydrate, his metabolic derangement could have gotten worse. And some people run into serious trouble. So wanted to pitch it to you and what are your initial thoughts? Oh my, so much uh, information and so many lessons uh, in this case. Very interesting case, Dr. Burns. Well, where do we start? We start with the natural diet of humans. We are plant-eating hominids like our gorilla cousins uh, who do not shun away from carbohydrates. Uh, they welcome uh, fruits and leaves and berries and starches. Uh, and they build these magnificent bodies with them. But we've gotten this idea in our head that anything that car that raises your blood sugar a little bit or causes an insulin uh, reaction and insulin is bad, it, it sets off inflammation. So keep that insulin down. Uh, and one way to do that is don't eat any sugars at all. And uh, well, that means just eat a bunch of fat and protein. And indeed, uh, you can do that for a while, and it has some effects in the body. When the body is forced to burn fats, and when the only fuel it's getting is, is fat and protein and meats, basically, and non-starchy vegetables, then you're going to be burning fats. And there's some problems with that. It's not our usual fuel. It's an emergency fuel. And uh, you wind up releasing these waste products called ketones, which are little acid molecules uh, into your bloodstream. And it turns out, uh, you know, in our ancient foraging years, a uh, million years ago, surely three, four days would go by before our ancestors found the next berry bush with fruit on it. And, and, and going three, four days without food was probably a pretty regular occurrence. And our body learned into how to shift into this gear of fat burning. And, and these ketones came into the blood. And for a few days, they actually could produce some beneficial changes. And it could, the cells clean themselves out um, and, and uh, inflammation can subside. And so there's some, uh, some benefits to being in ketosis for a few days every so often, maybe once a month, people uh, do intermittent fast. 
but uh, I don't know if it was an American thing or not, but it's um, that philosophy, well, if a little is good, more must be better. And so, you know, we stayed in ketosis for three days. How about let's stay in it for weeks? How about let's stay in it for months? Let's do a whole diet that keeps you in ketosis forever. Yay. Well, uh, Mother Nature's got something to say about it. It's uh, not a natural state for our body. Again, we're carbohydrate-burning organisms. That's why we have uh, starch-digesting enzymes in our saliva. That's why we have a tongue that craves sweet things. We we want that those glucose uh, sugar molecules for energy. When we force ourselves just to eat fats, we put ourselves in a state of uh, of acidosis. And it's a stress for the body. It's, you know, an, an, an automotive analogy is like driving your car from Los Angeles to Seattle in passing gear. You, you can do it, but you'll burn out the bearings in your engine. And, and I think metabolically, uh, to stay in, in ketosis week after week like this man was doing, uh, has some of you know adverse effects. Uh, you burn down your blood sugar, of course, because of the acids in the blood forces the kidneys into a state of diuresis, and uh, and he probably was peeing out a lot of his blood volume when he stood up or to get out of the pool, and whoa, felt like he was you know the world was closing in on him. He felt like he was dying. There was probably low blood pressure. He was probably hypovolemic, and his blood pressure dropped to. 60 over 40, and uh, you feel like you're going to die in that case. Uh, but fortunately, came back okay when they got him horizontal into the hospital and started an IV. Came out okay. But it's a sign that this is not a natural state. It's not a healthy state uh, to stay in, to force your body to stay in. Uh, and plus, no one's done this long term. No one's stayed in keto. I've been on a ketogenic diet for 20 years. 30, nobody's done that. Um, and because uh, there's a good chance it's going to precipitate some bad uh, uh, problems in your body. The ketosis, uh, ketogenic diet, raises the, um, the amount of bad uh, atherogenic cholesterol, APOB particles, go up on a ketogenic diet. Uh, it damages the endothelial lining in the artery opening the door to plaque formation, uh, to keep putting all that meat and eggs down in your gut, spawns bacteria down in your gut that, that inflame the gut wall, allow food protein and endotoxin to leak in your bloodstream, setting off inflammation. And and to stay on this diet, who's going to do that? I mean, it means, you're, are you never going to eat fruit again? Are you never going to eat beans again? Uh, it's, it's just a non-sustainable diet. And... Uh, and then finally, there's been studies clearly showing that the more red meat people eat, the higher their risk for dying, for the all-cause mortality goes up with red meat consumption for cancer risk and, uh, heart, and heart, heart attack and stroke risk. So all the way around, it's, it's not a diet for homo sapiens. And this is just an extreme example. I'm glad the man's okay. But uh, it was... You know, you're driving along in your car, and all of a sudden, a bunch of red lights show up on the gas on the dashboard. The oil, water, temperature—that's what was happening in this man's body. There was a whole bunch of red lights flashing, and I'm glad he's okay. But it's a sign that the ketogenic diet is—it's uh, uh, okay for a day or two or three, but don't stay in it long term. It's certainly not a diet of health, as this man showed. It was formative for him. He never thought this could have happened, and he never wants to to the keto diet again <laughs> you know it's some aspects of it he, he reduced some processed food and he's going to stick with that but once i knew he was doing this and was able to coach him some he understands that having complex carbohydrates in his regular diet is critical uh, that's how we're designed as you say yeah i think it was you who said like there's some weight loss methods that just don't make sense so you could amputate your leg and you'd lose a few pounds and um that just doesn't mean you should do it. Absolutely. You know, you, you get this initial weight loss. And uh, because the keto folks, you know, they, they say, you know, stop the dairy products, stop the flour products, stop the baked goods, stop the oils. Uh, no, no, they may permit the oils, actually. Uh, but they stop the, the flour products and the dairy products. And you'll lose weight if you do that. And uh, stopping all carbohydrates and all fruits, you know, you'll lose weight. And the weight loss itself will improve your your uh, 
your insulin sensitivity a, a bit, but not really. Uh, these folks get low blood sugars because they're not eating any any sugar. But the fact is, <clears throat> with all the fat that they're eating, they're clogging up their insulin receptors from the inside. Uh, and so they're actually insulin resistant. They don't see it. Uh, because they're not eating any sugar. And if they do eat any any piece of fruit, uh, because their insulin receptors are all clogged up, that sugar spikes. And they say, see those bad carbohydrates, see that's what happens when you eat fruit. But they're creating this effect with all the fats that they're eating. It's a, it's a physiologic parlor trick. And uh, it, you should not be seduced by it. Uh, we are carbohydrate burning organisms. That's, uh, you know, ask any gorilla, ask any buffalo, any giraffe, uh, you know, you can certainly make powerful bodies on plant-based foods here. So uh, I, I've got to put, put the thumbs down when it comes to ketogenic diets. And this man should improve the case. <laughs> 